Ministries and welcome to our YouTube channel. We're so excited that you've tuned in to our daily devotional series, Talk to Me Jesus. We've been sharing this now on Facebook Live and we decided to bring it over to our YouTube listeners and we hope that you will enjoy it. Be sure to leave us a comment when you're finished and don't forget to subscribe. Have an awesome and wonderful day. Bye-bye. Good morning. Happy Friday. We made it to the end of the work week. Robin Smiley here. Come up higher ministries. Get the video shared this morning. Good morning. All right. How's everybody doing this morning? Welcome to Rise and Shine. Talk to me, Jesus Daily Devotional, our Friday edition, kicking off our weekend in the Word. Amen. So happy you have joined us today for another episode of Talk to Me Jesus, the Daily Devotional. Hey, good morning, JoJo. We're just kicking off. It's Friday. We made it to the end of a work week. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we just first come saying thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking us up once again. Truly great is your faithfulness to us, God. Day after day, morning after morning, your mercies we see, God. We thank you for the new mercies for this day, God. We thank you for what you have for us on this day in our time with you. We thank you, Lord God, for an on-time word, for a rhema word, for a healing word, for a delivering word. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the one who will lead and guide us into all truth. And we are here with expectant hearts, God, to receive from you once again. God, I ask that you would fill my mouth with your word, God, that everything that is said, Lord God, will bring you glory, that your people will be edified, and we will receive exactly what we need on today. Lord, we bless you and praise you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, good morning, Yvette. Welcome to the Friday edition, the weekend edition of Talk to Me, Jesus, Rise and Shine. All right, y'all, it's May 1st. It is May 1st. We have made it through four months of 2020, right? We are entering into a new month. Good morning, Catherine. May 1st, the fifth month. And as I was praying a little bit this morning, God said this is the month of his grace and it's the month of blooming. So be prepared to bloom this month. Be prepared to receive his grace. What is his grace? His enabling power that will cause you to bloom. We've already been praying about the rain of God falling. And we know when the rain falls on the plants, what do they do? They bloom. And we are planted where? By the rivers of living water. So May is your month to bloom. May is your month of grace. Amen. So we're going to get started with our devotional today. You'll see I've titled it Free Your Mind. And in our book that we use, Talk to Me Jesus, each month they have a, a little um, saying before the month starts. So for May it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So nine times out of ten, the month of May, we're going to be dealing with the mind. We're going to be dealing with our thought life. We're going to be dealing with um, combating the enemy in our mind. Amen. But again, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And that comes from Philippians 2 and 3. We have to remember that we have the mind of Christ. Why? Because the word tells us. And, and the way that we maintain that is we allow it. It says let. We have to make a choice to think like Jesus. Remember a long time ago when it was WWJD, what would Jesus do? We have to make a choice to make the same decisions that Jesus would make in whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, right? So let's see what the devotion has to say to, for today, Friday, May 1st. It says, this month, Remove from your mind every thought of failure. Wow. This month, remove from your mind every thought of failure. A weak spirit will swallow your dignity as sand drinks the rain. I'm here to prosper your soul with integrity, wholeness, clear direction, and single-mindedness. I want you to dance on mountaintops singing the songs of angels. 
I want you to eat the sweets of royalty while riding the chariots of fortune. I want your good conscience to reward you so you'll be unashamed to stand in the full strength of the sun. What you think of as failure is but a step further toward the goal of your high calling in me. Hey, good morning, Brittany. Wow. So let's break this down a little bit. First of all, he's saying not next month, not tomorrow, not even next year, but this month, the very first day of the month, we are at the very first day of a new month, May, May 1st, right? The fifth month, five represents the number of grace. And he's saying this month, remove from your mind every thought of failure. Where have you said to yourself, I'm a failure? Have you felt like you failed as a wife? Have you felt like you failed as a husband? Have you felt like you failed as a mother, as a parent? Have you felt like you failed on your job? Have you felt like you failed in your business? Have you felt like you failed in your friendships and your relationships? What, where has the enemy tried to convince you to believe that you are a failure? Maybe you've even felt like you failed in your ministry, right? But God is saying this month, remove from your mind every thought of failure so he's saying there's a role that we have to play we have to do something we no longer have to sit idly by and just allow those thoughts of failure to keep coming right the enemy shoots them like darts at us right and he's saying remove them the dart has has, has come and it's landed it's, it's lodged in our mind and he's saying take that thing and pull it out you know like when people shoot um arrows at the bullseye and they have to go out and, and pull it out god is saying take take Remove the, the arrow from your mind, literally remove it. And I'm sure our scriptures will probably give us some verses to use to do that. But of course, the first one that comes to me is in um, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But what are we to do? We're to take every thought captive, right? That's how we remove it. We, we see that it's come in, it's tried to imprison us, and then we have to take it captive. We have to put that thought in prison, remove it from our mind, and, and allow God to begin to move through us, right? It says this month. So this month, guys, do a self-evaluation. Where are you saying to yourself, where are you allowing the enemy to say that you have failed? Whatever those areas are, write them down and then remove those thoughts from your mind. This month, remove from your mind every thought of failure. It's important that you remove every thought, right? Because if you leave just one thought there, it opens the door for more thoughts to come in. So you have to remove every thought, but then you have to replace it with the thought of, of, of God, right? With the words of God. That's why it says, let this mind being you, which was in Christ Jesus. It says a weak spirit will swallow your dignity as sand drinks the rain. Wow. A weak spirit will swallow your dignity as sand drinks the rain. So when you think about sand, if you've ever been to the beach, not even the rain, but if you just pour water on it, you see how it sinks down. You see how it gels together, right? God is saying when your spirit is weak, it's, it's like your, your dignity is swallowed up immediately. So he's saying, first of all, free your mind of every negative thought. When we do that, we are able to strengthen ourselves, to strengthen our inner man with the word of God so that our dignity, regardless of, of what has happened, right, regardless of the shame that may have tried to come from whatever area we believe we failed in, right? I shared with you all before that when I was divorced, I was ashamed, right? My dignity was, was shattered. It was sinking into the sand like, like water being poured on it. But God is saying, remove from your mind every thought of failure, and then your spirit can have room to be strengthened by the word of God. As long as I ran from God thinking I was doing something because I was mad at him and not going to church, all I was doing was watering the sand of my dignity, right? All I was doing, I wasn't strengthening my inner man. I was strengthening my shame. And so God is saying, when we have a weak spirit, it will swallow your dignity as sand drinks the rain. But there's good news. There's always good news with God. He says, but I'm here to prosper your soul with integrity, 
wholeness, clear direction, and single-mindedness. He says, I'm here to prosper your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. Hey, um, Reverend Stephanie, welcome once again. He says, I'm here to prosper your mind, I'm here to prosper your will, and I'm here to prosper your emotions, where you have been lacking in your, in your mind, where you have been lacking in your will, where you have been lacking in your emotions, right? God says, I'm here to prosper your soul with what? With integrity, wholeness, clear direction, and single-mindedness. 2020, the God, I don't have my shirt on today, but God gave me that 2020 was the year of clarity. He said, I'm here to give you clear direction. He said, it's the year of consistency. We will no longer start some things and then stop and, and pick them up five months later. He says, we will be consistent in everything that we do. He says that this is the year of confidence, right? Once we have the clarity and we begin to operate in consistency, it's automatically going to bring forth confidence. Confidence. And the last thing he gave us was that this would be a year of conquering. So as we receive the clarity of God, the clear direction of God, as we are consistent in applying the word to our lives and doing what he said for us to do, we can walk in confidence. We don't have to worry about the fiery darts that the enemy is throwing at our minds, right? We will conquer. We will then be able to take every thought captive that is in disobedience to Christ. And we have to first know that it is God's desire. He says, don't allow your shame to swallow your, swallow your dignity. Know that I'm here to prosper your soul with integrity, right? He wants us to walk into the truth of his word. He wants us to have a spirit of integrity, right? He said, I'm here to prosper your soul with integrity, with wholeness. That means nothing missing, nothing broken. You are complete in him. I'm here to prosper your soul with clear direction and with single mindedness. No more, you know, running to and fro in your mind. You are focused. You are set. Your eyes are set on the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, right? You're not looking to the left nor to the right but you're listening for the still small voice behind your ear saying this is the way walk ye in it Isaiah 30 and 21 all right the next section of our devotional says I want you to dance on mountaintops singing the songs of angels God does not want us in despair God does not want us in, in worry. He wants us dancing, right? When you think about dancing, there is a celebration. And when you let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, right? When you think the way Jesus thought, you will always be in a position of celebration. You will always be in a position of dancing, right? It said that David danced so much and praised God so much, he danced out of his clothes. God says, I want you to dance on mountaintops. Hey, good morning, um, Tiara. He says, I want you to dance on mountaintops, not just dance, but singing the songs of angels. He has a high place for us, right? We talked about how he's taken us from glory to glory. We're already seated in heavenly places, but God is taking us even higher. He says, I want you to dance on mountaintops. He says, I want you to eat the sweets of royalty. Not just, you know, your snicker bar, but the sweets of royalty. You know, I don't even know what the, what the royals eat that is sweet, right? Little crumpets and, and whatever they call it, right? He says, but he's, he's, we are kings and priests in this, in this earth. And he wants us to have the best. It's his desire for us to eat the sweets of royalty while riding the chariots of fortune. Not just one chariot, but the chariots of fortune, right? Financial fortune, physical fortune, mental fortune, business fortune, ministry fortune, family fortune, job fortune, relationship fortune, every area of our lives, right? There is a chariot. You know, when you think about people um, riding in chariots, you know, that's royalty again. Um, when in, in my hometown, there's a nice area called the plaza and they have where you can do these um, chariot rides and it's just, you just feel, you know, special. You just feel um, 
like you're a king or, or a prince or a queen or whatever, right? And he says, I want you to eat the sweets of royalty while riding the chariots of fortune. Lack is not our portion in any area. It starts in our mind as we renew our minds about how we think about who God is and what he says that he desires for us. We will prosper. We will ride in chariots of fortune. He says, I want your good conscience to reward you so you'll be unashamed to stand in the full strength of the sun. He didn't just say your conscience. He wants our good conscience so that, again, w there's a difference. We can have a bad conscience or we can have a good conscience. And it's all dependent on if we let this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. It's all dependent on the word of God. How much word have we allowed into our minds? How much time are we spending meditating on the things of God, right? He says, I want your good conscience to reward you so you'll be unashamed to stand in the full strength of the sun. Meaning when it gets hot, meaning when the enemy is coming on every side, meaning when you feel threatened, meaning when it seems like, oh no, I can't make it, meaning when this pandemic hits and you've seen family members, you've seen friends of family members pass away in the, in the, in the, threat of fear tries to come upon you. He says, I want your good conscience to reward you so you'll be unashamed to stand in the full strength of the sun. The word of God strengthens us. The word of God uh, gives us the ability and the capacity to endure the heat of the, of the storm, right? Amen. Amen, Reverend Stephanie, you're picturing what I'm saying. Amen. So just think about that, right? The sun is beaming down, hot, 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 right? Have you, have you, if you go to Florida, um, I think one of the young ladies on here lives in Florida. Certain times of the year in Florida, that sun is beaming, that sun is hot. And if you are just out there in that heat, right, it sometimes can be unbearable. God is saying when you find yourselves in those unbearable situations, because your good conscience is filled with the word of God, then you will know and be able to stand and endure whatever those fiery darts are, right? You you won't you won't hesitate in raising your shield of faith. You won't hesitate in covering yourself with the breastplate of righteousness. You won't hesitate to put on the helmet of salvation. You won't hesitate hesitate to gird your loins about you with truth and put on the the shoes of peace, right? You won't hesitate to carry the um, sword of the spirit because your good conscience has constantly been meditating on the word so just as when Jesus was tempted in the garden right he had he, in the wilderness I mean after 40 days of fasting he was hungry and then here comes the enemy tempting him right but what did he do he didn't yield to the pressure he didn't yield to the heat he said but it is written Three times he had to rely on the word and said, it is written. We have to be relentless in relying on the word, right? We can't just say it one time and think the enemy's going to go away because he's not. He's going to come a different way. He's going to use a different tactic. He didn't use the same tactic with Jesus in the wilderness, right? He came at a different angle. Well, maybe I can get him this way. Maybe I can get him that way. He does the same thing with us. There's nothing new about the enemy's tactics. But what we have to remember is we have to be relentless in keeping our mind renewed with the word of God so that whatever situation he tries to throw at us, we can tell him it is written. It is written that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. When the enemy tries to threat you with the spirit of infirmity, it is written that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. It is written that the children shall eat the bread. The, um, the healing is the children's bread, right? It is written, you know, we have to be ready for, for whatever the enemy throws at us with having a good conscience filled with the word of God. Not with complaint, not with murmuring, but with what God says. Amen. He says, what you think of as failure is but a step further toward the goal of your high calling in me. This is very important. 
right? A lot of us, we talked about this yesterday, about things that we have buried and need to be resurrected. A lot of us don't move out in our gifts, <clears throat> in our gifts, in, an, in our callings. A lot of us don't move out in what we know God has said for us to do simply because we don't want to fail. <clears throat> But when we don't move out, when we don't let this mind be in us that is in Christ Jesus, we immediately fail, right? It says, what you think of as failure is but a step further toward the goal of your high calling in me. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say, for example, again, you know, guys, I always use myself as an example, right? Starting out in ministry, right? My first event, I had uh, close to 100 people there. And then as things, as time went on, the attendance started to dwindle. It started to die off, right? And I was like, oh, this is failing. I'm not doing well, right? When I first answered the call to go live, right? I didn't want to go live. Why? Because I was afraid. I was afraid that people wouldn't come on. I was afraid that I would mess up. I was afraid that I would look crazy. I was afraid because I didn't have proper lighting. I had all of these excuses, right? I was afraid of failure, but God is saying what you think of as failure is but a step further toward the goal of your high calling in me. So when I was thinking that because attendance had dwindled off that I was a failure, no, God was just reminding me, trust in me, daughter. It's not about the numbers. It's about you being fully committed to the work that I have called you to do. And when I finally got out of that funk and I stepped back up, it was like, it didn't matter to me if, if only five people came, if one person came. Why? Because God is after after the one just as the as the shepherd left the 99 and went looking for the one lost sheep that is my responsibility what this with what with this ministry right i can't be concerned with are there um, one person on or there are a thousand people on as i shared a testimony a few weeks ago just think if i would not have been obedient and came on and started doing these lives that testimony would not have come forth there are testimonies out there right now that i have no idea about there are people that have given their lives to christ that didn't send me an email that didn't type in the comments decision but because i was obedient this word has reached them. There are people that come on every morning that are blessed by this devotional, right? So if what I think, right, it says what you think of as a failure is a step. It's a stepping stone, right? We have to remember everything has a process. So yes, there may be one. Yes, there may be 10 online right now. But then when I go back and, and read the comments through later in the day, I see that there's been 50 views. People are watching, right? So I can't let what I see with my natural eye distract me. I have to know that God is moving behind the scenes and I have to take each step as an opportunity and not see it as a failure. Amen. Yes, Reverend Stephanie, as a man thinketh, so is he. Proverbs 23 and 7, what are you thinking? That is who you become. That is who you become. Yes, obedience is, is, is so important, Yvette. You know, I've had to learn that the hard way all my life. Obedience is important, you know, and, and as you said, I plant somebody else a water, God gets the increase, right? Whatever you have been called to do, don't be afraid to fail. Why? Because if God called you to it, there is no failure because there's no failure in God. It's when we try to take control, when we are doing what we want to do and what not what God wants us to do, that's when, the, the, when we fail. But when, when we are doing the work of God, whatever he has called us to do, if it is to give somebody $5 and we're afraid to go up to them and say, God, say, give me $5, you failed. But when you go up to them and you say, God told me to give you $5, they may look at you like you're crazy and you may think, oh my God, I miss God. No, you, you did what God said. It was a step to you building up your faith, right? What you think of as a failure is just a step towards you walking in the high calling of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we've got several scriptures today and we're going to see what they have to say to us. <clears throat> How am I doing on time? 625. 
The first one comes from Isaiah 54 and 17. This is a very common scripture. We quote it all the time. We use it in prayer all the time, right? But we don't know the whole scripture. Isaiah 54 and 17, it says what? No weapon formed against me, you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So let's break this down. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. We know that like the back of our hand. No weapon formed against me shall prosper everywhere you go. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, right? But what does that really mean? Do you really know what that means? That means that a weapon is going to form. That means that a gun is going to be pointed, but when the when the person hit, hits the trigger, the bullet's not going to come out. That means that you're going to have difficulty, but but it's not going to prosper. That means that that your body may experience infirmity, but it's not going to take you out. That means that you may have some issues in your marriage, but your marriage is not going to end in divorce. That means that your children may think they're grown because they're 15 and they want to mouth off, but it will not prosper. They will not turn out to be rebels in the community, right? We have to remember just because we are believers, as Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble, but be encouraged, take cheer. I have overcome the world. When we let this mind be in us as it, it was in Christ Jesus, no matter what trouble we face, we will know that we can overcome the world. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why? Because we're going to put on the full armor of God, first of all. We're going to have on the helmet of salvation that's going to cover our mind. So when the fiery darts of the enemy are being shot at our mind, they're going to ricochet off because it's covered with the helmet of salvation. That helmet helps us to remember the word of God that we put in our mind, right? We're going to put on the breastplate of righteousness. No weapon formed is going to prosper. When someone tries to slander your character, you're not going to try to um, clap back as, as they say now, right? Because you have on the breastplate of righteousness, you're going to walk in righteousness. You're going to respond in a righteous manner. When, when your faith is tested, what are you going to do? You're going to put up the shield of faith. You're not going to allow the enemy to shoot those darts at your faith, but you're going to carry the shield of faith standing firm on the word of God. When, when, when someone tries to cause you to do something that's dishonest, you're going to have your loins get girt about with the belt of truth. You're going to walk in the truth of the word in the spirit of integrity, right? When you find yourselves in hostile situations, you're going to walk in there with the shoes of the gospel of peace and bring peace. Your very presence, the very essence of your presence will bring peace. Remember how I said the shadow of Paul could heal people? people, when you walk into a room, the very essence of your presence can change the atmosphere. We are going, no matter what the weapon is, because we are our sons and daughters of God, right? We're not just children. We have matured into the sons and daughters of God. When we enter that room, no matter what happens, no weapon form shall prosper. The doctor may say, I, I don't know what to do. There's something going on. I can't figure it out. No weapon form shall prosper, right? And then it says, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. So we're talking about freeing our mind, right? So when the tongue of the enemy brings those thoughts into your mind, you are to condemn them. That tongue has risen against you. Even when you think the thought to say something negative about yourself, your own tongue, you need to condemn. When your own tongue wants to rise up and say, you are a failure, you are a horrible mother, you are a horrible wife, you are a horrible husband, you're never going to get this job, whatever that that tongue is that you have said out of your mouth, I'm always broke. Whatever it is, you need to rise up and condemn that thing, right? It says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue. So that means your tongue is not off limits. Every tongue. Right. I often pray to muzzle the mouth of the enemy to cancel the negative confessions that come out of doctors mouths because they're just doing their job. Right. They're just they're just saying what they see on the x-ray. Right. They they're not trying to to be negative. They're just telling you 
the facts, right? But you sometimes you have to even muzzle that and condemn that. Don't receive what is being said because God says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn, right? So again, I want us to focus on us. What are we saying about ourselves? How are we negatively judging ourselves? We need to rise up and condemn that tongue of judgment. And we need to begin to speak what the word of God says. I am above only and not beneath. I am a lender and not the borrower. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I will live and not die. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Whenever that tongue of judgment rises up, right, you have to begin to counteract it with the word of God. You have to um, know that that weapon being formed is not going to prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Not the pastor, not your best friend, right? You, you will condemn it. Amen. Good morning, Lakeisha. And then it says, why? Because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. We, we, because we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, this is our inheritance. We can stand firm on this word alone because this is our inheritance. But when we allow the spirit of fear to creep in, when we allow the spirit of doubt to creep in, it causes us to waver and it causes us to forget about the inheritance that we have received, right? Normally, you, you don't get an inheritance until someone dies. Well, Jesus died, but he's alive now, right? He is still living. We, we are operating under a living inheritance, an eternal inheritance. It's not going away. It's not going away. It is our right. It is our heritage. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Who are the servants of the Lord? Anyone that says that they are a believer, anyone who says that they have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior is a servant of the Lord. A servant of the Lord is not just the pastor. A servant of the Lord is not just the deacon. A servant of the Lord is a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, you may not be doing all that you could be doing for the Lord, but you can change that right away by renewing your mind, by letting this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. What type of mind did Christ have? He said, I have come to save the lost. That's the mindset that he had. His goal was to, to save the lost. His goal was to heal the sick. His goal was to prepare the people for a greater life after he left. That's what you do as a servant of the Lord. That's what we are called to do. That's what we're doing every morning on this Talk to Me Jesus devotional. We are equipping you. We are, we are preparing ourselves, right, to minister the gospel to those that don't know him. We are strengthening ourselves with the word. So when the, the things of this world come, you know, come in against us and try to um, make us feel like, oh, I can't take it anymore because our mind is fortified, right? When something is fortified, like that means that there's walls all around, right? In the Bible, it talks about how they would fortify certain areas against the enemy, right? The enemy couldn't get in. There was a wall built all around. They were safe. We have to fortify our minds with the word of God so that nothing can get in. Jesus said that when the enemy comes, he will not find anything in me. Can you say that? <clears throat> I can't say that because I know there are times when I doubt. I know there are times when the spirit of fear tries to creep in, but what I can say is I don't rest there. I don't stay there. I immediately remind myself of what the word has said because why I have meditated on the word of God, right? And it says, if you meditate on the word day and night, it will not depart from your mouth, meaning it will always be readily there. You may pause for a minute. That spirit of fear may hit you for a minute, but then you're going to turn around with that word of God. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, right? But it all starts in our mind. Amen. No weapon formed will prosper. And I, I pray that when you think about this scripture, when you pray this scripture, 
when you meditate on the scripture, you have a better understanding of what it means. It's not just a sound good scripture. It is your inheritance. It is your living inheritance that, that you operate in this manner, that you believe what this word says. But most of all, most importantly, that you rise up and you condemn your own tongue of judgment against yourself. Amen. All right, let's move on. Psalm 31 and 24. It says, be of good courage and he will do what? He will strengthen your heart and all you who hope in the Lord. Be of good courage. God will strengthen your heart. When, when you feel like you can't go on, when you feel like you are a failure, when you have renewed your mind, it's going to strengthen you, right? My favorite scripture, Isaiah 40 and 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That waiting is not sitting idly by. That waiting is spending time in the word. That waiting is saying, Lord, how can I serve you today? That waiting is is renewing your mind that waiting is meditating on scriptures that have caused you to feel weak he says they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they will do what they will mount up as wings of eagles they will run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint there may be a long distance there may be some endurance that you need to take on in whatever your situation is but as you renew your mind, as you go into it with good courage, with a good conscience, knowing that the word of God can change you and transform you, you will have the endurance that you need to walk this thing out, right? We don't know how long we're going to be dealing with this pandemic. But because we know the word of God, we are strengthened. When we get tired, when we're like, oh, I just want to go outside, I just want to be free, I don't want to have to wear this mask, we can stand on the word of God and be strengthened to endure until the end. Why? He who endures receives the promise. That's what it said about Abraham. Because he endured, he received the promise. We know it took over 25 years for him to receive the promise, and he didn't get it right in those 25 years. He tried to help God out by listening to his wife that said, sleep with my, my maid servant right. They had a son that that um, was not the, the promise. He was the counterfeit. Sometimes we find ourselves in that situation, and the enemy will try to say, you failed. But God is saying, no, that that situation where you you listen to the flesh and not to me, I'm going to use it as a stepping stone towards you walking in my high calling. Why? Because it's going to be a testimony to help somebody else. So be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart and you hope all you who hope in the Lord. Hebrews 10 and 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Wow, that's that's painful right there. God says the just. Who is the just? Again, the believer. We have been made righteous because of the blood of Christ. We have been made just. We have been made, um, our, our sins have been forgiven in the eyes of Christ. It says now the just shall live by what? By our flesh? By our own way of thinking? No, the just shall live by faith. Meaning that even though we can't see it, even though we're not sure when it's going to happen, faith without works is dead. We shall live by faith, right? But if anyone draws back, right, meaning if we begin to waver, if we begin to doubt, like I drew back from God when I was mad at him because I, my marriage ended in divorce. If anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. God is saying that that doesn't please him because he's told us in Hebrews eleven six. That is by faith that he is pleased, right? So the just shall live by faith. We don't live by our, our emotions, right? Uh, one of the, the pastors I follow, Dr. Sharon Nesbitt, sometimes I share her videos. She used to say, faith don't care. Faith don't care. Faith don't care that you don't feel like it. Faith don't care when I'm tired and don't want to get up in the morning. Faith don't care that um, the doctor has said a negative report. Faith don't care right? We are living by faith, not by what we see, not by what we hear on the media, not by what our friends and our family are saying. Anything that doesn't line up with the word of God, we're not living by that. We are living by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. If you feel like you haven't been living, if you feel like you are about to just, you know, die in internally, right? You're just weak. That, that, that Check your faith wall 
What are, you, what are you meditating on? What are you allowing to encourage you, right? You need to get back in it. Faith don't care. Yes, Yvette, I loved it. When she said it, I was like, wow. She's like, faith don't care. Faith don't care, right? Faith don't care. So we're almost done. Second Corinthians 12 and 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient. We don't like to hear that sometimes. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You know, guys, when we are afraid to fail, we are actually operating in pride. I'm going to just let that sit. When we are afraid to fail, we are operating in pride. When we are afraid to be vulnerable and allow our weaknesses to show, we are operating in pride, right? But God, we know what happens. Pride comes before the fall, right? And this says, and he said to me, this is Paul talking, my grace is sufficient for you. God is saying his enabling power is all that we need to withstand whatever that situation is. My grace is, for, is sufficient for you. Why? For my strength is made perfect in weakness. God's strength is not perfected until we allow our weaknesses to come forth. God's strength in me could not be perfected until I made the decision to go live. God's strength cannot be perfected in you until you release whatever that weakness is. Until you open up and say, God, I just can't forgive them. But when you try to do it on your own, right, and you still have a nasty attitude towards that person or just the sound of their name causes something to rise up in you, you need to release that thing to God. He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities. Don't be afraid to tell somebody, you know, I, I'm having a hard time forgiving so-and-so. That's the first step. What alcoholics, they say the first step to recovery is admitting you have a problem, right? The first step to deliverance is acknowledging the problem is acknowledging the area that you need to be delivered in. It's acknowledging that weakness. It's acknowledging the fact that you can't do it alone. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. So stop trying to do it by yourself. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. Begin to think as Jesus thought. Let this mind be in you as was in Christ Jesus. He said, I rather boast in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. When the power of Christ rests upon you, you are unstoppable. You, there is nothing that you can't do because you are doing it not in your own strength, but in the power of Christ. And the power of Christ not only rests upon you, but resides on the inside of you. So if you have it on the inside and the outside, child, please, you are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. Amen. Your strength, God's strength is not perfected until you acknowledge your weaknesses. The longer we don't acknowledge our weaknesses, the further we are walking in pride. And the more we walk in pride, the deeper we stay in pride, the longer we stay on the path of pride, there's going to be failure. Because pride comes before the fall. If we don't get off the path of pride, we're going to fail. But the moment we say, you know what, I can't do this on my own. I need you, God. I relinquish this weakness to you. I relinquish the fact that, you know, um, I don't want to be in the forefront. I relinquish the fact that that um, I can't forgive this person. I relinquish the fact that I, I have had thoughts that were not proper, you know, about, you know, an, uh, the opposite sex. Whatever it is that you're wrestling with, right? God says, relinquish that thing to me. He says, my grace is sufficient. All you need is my grace and his grace is his enabling power. When we tap into the power of God, his grace, it is sufficient. It is enough. It may be this much grace one day and it may be this much grace another day. But whatever level of grace that we need, God is willing and ready to provide it. And it is sufficient. Amen. 
So remember that my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So our last scripture today, Philippians 3 and 14, I press, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. That's a new King James. The King James says, I press toward the mark of the call of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Amen. Press means to there there's that you, there's some effort involved right it's not easy but you have to to be intentional you have to press right i you have to press to get up early in the morning to um come on 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 this devotional right when god said the time i was like god 6 a.m you know but there are people that do lives even earlier than me they press and people they have thousands of viewers you know and people press they make their way. We have It has to be important enough to you to do it. So it says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And we aren't pressing just so that we can receive. We are pressing because of our love for God. We are pressing because of our hunger and our thirst for him. But because he says, when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. Amen. You will be filled. So we press for the things of God. Amen. That was Philippians 3 and 14. So I pray that this um, devotional today, this first day of May, that you are charged up, that you are ready to renew your mind, that you are ready to free your mind of every thought of failure. Amen. Um, Yvette, Jesus is the prize that we're pressing forward for. Yes. Whatever you do, you got to keep moving. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep moving. Keep pressing. Right. You may hit a roadblock here. You may um, hit a curve here. But God is saying, keep moving. Press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is Christ Jesus. Keep moving. Keep pressing. Don't give up. Now is not the time. Now more than ever is not the time to give up. Now more than ever is not the time to turn your back on God. Now is the time to dig deeper. Now is the time to, as the scripture says, keep your hand to the plow, right? Keep digging, keep making your way with him and watch him bring you out. Watch him cause you to shine, right? Yesterday we, we learned about that God is calling us out. We are to rise up and we will shine. So renew your mind. It says this month, we are at the first day of the month. So we have 31 days in this month. They say it takes 21 days for something to become a habit. Every day, begin to just remove every negative thought. I would encourage you when you get off this live, get you a piece of paper and um, start writing out the things that you feel that you have failed in and let God show you how he's using those to um, press you towards the prize of the high calling in him. Romans 8 and 28. Yes, that scripture is a very good scripture. Why? Because we're going to look at that. We're going to close on that, right? A lot of people like to say all things work together for my good for them who are called according to the Lord, right? But we forget that the part that goes before that is what is really working for our good. Let me just um, read that starting in 26. It says, likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And then verse 28, it starts with that conjunction. It starts with the word and. So that means the, the previous scriptures um, have, have preference on what's coming next. And it says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the call according to his purpose. Well, all things work together for good because the Holy Spirit has been interceding on our behalf. 
It's not the negative things that happen that are working together for our good. It's the fact that the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us is interceding on our behalf as we are going through those things, right? And, and because of that, he is searching our hearts right now. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is. We're talking about the mind today. Do you have the mind of Christ? Let these things be in you. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, right? He makes intercession for the saints according to what? To the will of God. And then, and we know that all things work together. All things, all the murmurings and groanings of the Holy Spirit. When you pray in, in tongues, when you pray in your heavenly language, all those prayers are working together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So when you hear that, that verse, when people say all things work, work together for the good, you know, a lot of times they associate it with the negative things that are happening. Yes, God may use those negative things, but the all things working together for the good is the prayers of the Holy Spirit that are being made on our behalf. Just a little teaching moment right there. And I... And I pray that you guys got something out of that. All right. God bless you all. It's 6.50. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We just exalt you, God. We love you, Lord. We just pause and say we love you, Lord. We thank you, God, for teaching us once again on today, for sending the Holy Spirit, for raining down a fresh rhema word, God. This is a new month. This is a new month. You're doing, you told us yesterday that you were doing a new thing. We're embarking on a new month, the month of grace, the month of blooming. We thank you, Lord God, that the seeds that you have already deposited on the inside of us, that the rain is coming down and we will begin to see the increase of our harvest, Lord God, that we will begin to see the flowers. We will send the, receive the fruits and the vegetables, Lord God. We will begin to see, Lord God, the blooming in our own life. We thank you that it is by your grace, by your enabling power that we shall bloom this month. We thank you that because we are your heirs and joint heirs with Christ, that we walk in righteousness, that we can live by faith. You said the just shall live by faith. So we thank you that we have the faith of God, that we have faith in God, and we thank you that we can be faithful to God. We thank you, Father, that you are helping us with our faithfulness, just as great is your faithfulness to us. You're, there's no failing in you, God. There is no failing in us. So we take every thought captive that the enemy tries to say that we have failed in. We decree and declare that we we are not a failure, but we operate in the spirit of excellence. We take every thought captive that says we can't do something, that we won't be something, that we're too old or we're too young or we don't have enough. Whatever those negative thoughts are, we decree and declare that today we have a mind shift. Today, our minds have been renewed. Today, our lives begin the transformation process. We go from the caterpillar to the butterfly. We thank you, Lord God. We go from being just the seed buried in the ground to the plant that's coming up. We thank you, Lord God, that we are blossoming, that we are blossoming in our thought life, that we are blossoming in the way that we think. We are blossoming in our perspective, that we truly can say that we think as Jesus thinks. For your word says we have the mind of Christ. Father, even if we have to say that day in and day out until it gets down in our heart, I have the mind of Christ. I will let this mind be in me, which is in Christ Jesus. Every thought will line up with your word of God for you, for you search the inward parts. And Father, when we don't know what to say, when we don't know how to pray, we give you thanks for the power of the Holy Spirit who resides on the inside of us who prays and intercedes on our behalf that whenever situations arise, we can know that all those things, all the prayers that have been prayed by the Holy Spirit will work together for our good. When we're not sure which way to turn, we thank you that you will give us wisdom liberally, that you will guide our steps. We thank you that the entrance of your word will bring light. Where, we're, where the path seems a little dark, the word will light it up for us. It will be like a street light shining bright, telling us which way to go. We thank you, Lord, that yes, 
we will hear the still small voice behind our ear saying this is the way you to walk in father we thank you that our mind is focused that we are we have we are single focused on you and on your word we're not all over the place we're not tossed by every wind of doctrine but lord we are standing firm on your word your word which says that by the stripes of jesus we are healed your word which says that we are more than conquerors through christ jesus your word that says you always cause us to triumph there is no failure in us because there is no failure in you so we thank you lord for the small steps we will not despise small beginnings because small beginnings lead to great endings so we thank you, Lord God, even in advance for the great ending that you have for each of our lives. I pray for every household represented now and even later on the replay for the great ending, God. Father, let us not get stuck in what we see in the beginning, but let us know that in you there is a great ending. There is a greater outcome. There is a higher place that you are calling us to, God. So, Father, we thank you right now that as we make the vow to renew our mind that yes God our thoughts can be your thoughts right now your thoughts may be higher than ours and your ways are higher but you desire for us to know your way you said to call upon you and you would show us great and mighty things therefore we can have your thoughts therefore we can have your way so we call upon you now oh God show us great and mighty things show us what is yet to come we, we ask that you remove the scales from our eyes. Let us see as you see. Make us seers in the realm of the spirit, God. Lord, we bless you and we praise you in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, Father. We thank you even now for the end of this pandemic. Father, we've heard that they've got a, 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 a remedy to kind of expedite the recovery time we we knew that it was there we've been praying for it to be unveiled and to be revealed we thank you for the continuing um spirit of wisdom being released on those in the medical field to help bring about a solution and a resolution to this pandemic we thank you lord god that lives will be saved, that the unnecessary um, loss of life shall cease. We again come against that spirit of death and hell, and we decree and declare that people shall live and not die, that no one will leave this earth without having the opportunity to accept you as Lord and Savior. Even now, God, we bind the spirit of fear that causes your believers not to share the gospel. We decree and declare that we will go forth in boldness, and we will tell someone about the goodness of God in the name of Jesus, that we won't um, rely on the fact that we don't always get it right. And we may do things with certain people and, and feel like, well, they're not going to listen to me because I'm still doing X, Y, and Z. No, we will open our mouth wide and we will share the gospel. We will open our mouth and let you fill it. And you will give us the word to say to that person, to that family member, to that friend, to that co-worker, God, we will go forth and do what you have called us to do, which is to be a minister of reconciliation where where those are apart from you we will bring them back lord god where reconciliation is needed in our homes in our families we will speak what you say to speak to bring about that process god so, Lord, we just thank you. We have a new, renewed mind. We have a new outlook. We have a new perspective, and it's the perspective of, of you, God. It's the outlook of you, God. Our glass isn't half empty, but it is half full. We thank you, Lord God. It is not even half full. We know that it is full. It is not only full, God. You said our cup will run over. So we thank you, God, for the overflow. We thank you for the overflow of your wisdom. We thank you for the overflow of your power. We thank you for the overflow of your boldness we thank you for the overflow in every area of our lives lord we bless you and praise you in jesus name amen and amen y'all know you can't get me to pray and it'd be hard for me to stop we might just have to do a, a, a day of prayer or something one day a couple of hours and just go to god and pray right but we just thank God. I thank God for you guys joining this morning. If someone is on here that does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you have come on the right live. All you have to do is say, Lord God, I am a sinner and I need to be saved. I believe Jesus is your son, that he died, was buried, and is resurrected. Lord Jesus, come into my life as Lord and Savior. And if you said that simple prayer, guess what? 
You are now a part of the kingdom of God. You have received the greatest gift you will ever receive in life, the gift of salvation and the gift of eternal life. So what's the next step? to continue to renew your mind. And the way that you do that is to get connected to a local church. You don't know one in your area, no worries. I will be more than happy to help you find one. Hit me up on email, info at uphire.org, or simply type in the comments decision, and I'll reach out to you and help you get started. As always, you can fellowship with us here every morning, Monday through Friday. We're here at 6 a.m. And we even have a weekend edition. We let you sleep in a little bit. It's 7.30 on Saturday and Sunday. So God bless you all. Again, if you, if you would like to sow into the ministry, we have um, several ways that you can do that. The easiest way is to go to Come Up Higher Ministries um, Facebook page and click the Contact Us button. Or if you go to our website, um, www.uphire.org and hit the Donate button, you can um, donate donate that way those of you who like cash app it is easy we have cash app as well our hashtag is dollar sign the number four and come up higher so god bless you all I, this word is always god is just so good it just encouraged me it just it just i'm ready to renew my mind guys so you had a little homework today write those things out what what is the enemy been saying that you are a failure in write them out and release them to god let him give you the word that will um, fill the place, right? Because you're removing it. You don't want to just um, leave your mind empty. You got to replace it with the word of God. And then the enemy, when he comes back, he won't be able to get in. Amen. God bless you. You're welcome, Tiara. So glad you were able to join. Bless you, Lakeisha, Jojo, Stephanie, everyone who was on. God bless you all. Have an awesome Friday. A wonderful start to the weekend, and we're in a new month, y'all. Remember, the month of grace, and it's your time to bloom. God bless you, Catherine. See you guys tomorrow, um, and don't forget to hit the share button. Let somebody else know and be a part of this um, enjoying, encouraging time. All right, have an awesome day. Bye-bye.